Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. So we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and basically anything else that we find interesting. Fair warning, we tend to laugh, try to have a little fun on this show. If that's not your thing, there's plenty of other shows that will put you right to sleep. Guaranteed. I've been stoned. Joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus. Hello. We got a lot of stuff to go over. A lot of stuff. But before that, I want to introduce everyone to a thing I bought. This is the Argon M.2. Not sponsored because I'm about to talk some smack about it. Um, <laughs> and even if you, we could be sponsored, we're not gonna now. <laughs> we're, we're just making doubly sure. That this is an interesting little case. Uh, we've talked about it on the show. Pedro, uh, you're, you're a huge fan of the uh, like dual USB 3 dongle that just juts out of the back. Like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that complete <laughs> abomination. <laughs> it works. Sec- this is elegant as you're going to get for a uh, M.2 uh, SATA 6 SSD as opposed to like sticking out on a stick. And that's the one I got. I got that and I, I was talking in the pre-show about, I couldn't even tell you the name brand of the um, <laughs> SSD that I bought because I sorted by cheap and I'm like, oh, 150, 120 gigs, whatever. And like 20 bucks done. It came, put it in, stuck it together, power button, everything works. Uh, found a small flaw with it. Now, it's not, I don't think if Pedro just gets real silent, we have a problem. But <laughs> um, thermally, they tried to be very clever. And the top of the case is just a block of aluminium or it might be a composite of something, another alloy. It's got maybe too much weight for aluminium, but it's just got like two little points that go directly down and it touches the uh, CPU, GPU area, which is great. You can't really tell it. Maybe you can in the video. There's no fins on the top of this case. So all that thermal load just is <laughs> flat. It, it, it gathers. It gathers. Oh. It, it, it's very much like um, a water cooling loop with a radiator without the fans on. Mm. <laughs> At some point, you're like, oh, because I, I, I was trying to break it as I do with new stuff. I'm like, OK, where's your failure point? And we'll work backwards from there. I found it. Um, just, yeah, just doing a stress test on it after about 45 minutes under total load. And of course I've overclocked the Pi to two gigahertz and, um, it couldn't handle it. Couldn't keep up. And there's a fan inside, but the fan doesn't do anything except keep the components mm. cool because it, it's just the thermal load sitting on the lid and, you know, maybe I can like tack some fins on it to cool it off. But after 45 minutes, the Pi's is like, nah, we're going back to our 600 megahertz and. We're just going to stay here. You've hit thermal capacity. <laughs> Goodbye. So in my, in closing for my full review of the um, detailed <laughs> review of Argon, it's 45 bucks. It's not bad. You get full size HDMI ports on the back. It's got a nice little breakout board. It's well engineered as in for desktop use, normal use, like probably what we're using here. It's going to be perfectly fine. Fans noisy though. So if the fan of it, you does have fan control and you set it up that thing, even at, Five percent, you're like that fan's on. It's so, a forty mil fan. <laughs> yes, but the you could get quieter fans. I'm just saying it's it's noisy even for such a small fan. But yeah, outside of that, I got tired of um looking for thirty sixty. I did. <laughs> I did. It was it was interfering with my life. Like I had subscribed to the. One of the YouTube channels with a screen that flashes and it turns out that they have like price alerts that on Twitter. And I was like, Ooh, maybe like I'm, I'm, just, I'm done. <laughs> I didn't pay the scalper price. I, in fact, I didn't buy a video card. I bought something else. More on that. Like nobody even knows what that is. Um, oh. I, I took that little bit of money that I'd put cause I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm kind of like Pedro on this 400 bucks, 425 for a 300 dollar card yeah that that's my line and it's probably gonna be well after like next year before that takes place yeah 2023 Mm -hmm. from the look of things yeah (laughs) so i just got that part out of my life stay tuned later this week Mm -hmm. and uh for something else video related that might be showing up how about you joe uh i know that was a long intro on my part but that there we go everyone's got that was cool (laughs) <laughs> so yeah i'm continuing to empty out my room to get it to remodel it when you have hundreds of computers to excavate from a room it takes a while right now i'm Good going through and, yeah 
<laughs> I'm going through all my cables and, tight, you know, uh, organizing all my cables right now because most of those computers were hooked up. <laughs> but also, um, I haven't uh, wanted to wear one of my vintage computer shirts. Uh, this one is from the 80s, and it's a real mouse looking at a Mac mouse, a two-button Mac mouse, and it says poser. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the most, I was telling Vin and Pedro, that's the most snarky I get here on Linux Gamecast on LWW. <laughs> Poser. That was a big thing in the 80s. <laughs> they, they didn't go for the Poser uh, spelling of Poser, so I'm disappointed. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> it's the old spelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, for me, I uh, there's been a lot of meetings at work, and when there are meetings at work, I uh, break out the pine sill and I start soldering things, and I finished one of the uh, SMD ones. It works, but uh, I almost lost every single one of them because they're dying. <laughs> oh. And uh, it is, yeah, no, the... It's really interesting. I put way too much solder on some of these joints. You can actually see the little mm. balls. Aww. Um, but yeah, no, everything works. Uh, the uh, stupid little Pedro, LED. I'm still at the point to where I'm amazed that you're getting them on there. So I'm not judging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the stupid little LED lights up when I put the nine volts across it. So there's that. And I... Uh, Got new second handphone. It's a Nokia 7.2 because dual SIM. Uh, it's chunky. It's a big phone. The case does add a couple extra mil, but 6.4 inch screen and uh, 2K resolution. It's really nice. It looks really nice. The battery lasts for about two days if you're not uh, using it a lot. So good enough. <laughs> and uh, yeah, most importantly, I was able to unlock the bootloader. So it does have Android 1, mm. which is nice. It means it'll get Android 11 if it doesn't come out in 2022. Oh, uh, the <laughs> great. <laughs> and yeah, the um, when support does eventually go away, I will be able to put something else on it because that's a really nice phone. That's the nicest phone I've ever had. So. <laughs> Awesome, Pedro. And you did a nice job with your soldering. You did a nice job. It was clean. (laughs) It it works. That that I I was going for it works. There we go. That is the best solution. Let other people clean up the mess. (laughs) Speaking of messes. Ah. <laughs> that's uh that's a very big mess well to be fair Aww. it's more of a step back but uh, more on that later cosmic to arrive <laughs> in june release of pop os 2104 so yes uh, the new version of uh, pop os is only coming out in june because well ubuntu needs to release 2104 first and all the bugs need to be hammered out but to go along with that uh the fine folks at System76 decided, let's let's make our own uh, version of GNOME. Uh, it doesn't have any type of gambling or people of uh, loose morals, but uh, it does have a paddle because they decided, well, they had a bit of a uh, poll of, in their community and asked people, okay, what kind of uh, extensions do you use always with GNOME? And people said, dash to panel or dash to dock. Mm-hmm. And so they decided, well, let's just build that in. And, well, Cosmic will have a dock that you can stretch out to take up the whole screen. What we have to and look at is, this is very interesting. This is a very uh, diplomatic way of phrasing. Let's see, over 56% of Pop! OS users surveyed that uh, they use dash to dock or a dash to panel, which is a polite way of saying, no, nix that. We're going to keep it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very true <laughs> it's, yeah no th- 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 that's where it feels like a step back because the gnome way of doing things is oh look at all this functionality that the people who are using gnome seem to enjoy let's get rid of it to introduce more stuff that no one asked for and uh yeah well <laughs> 
then again, it may be a step back, but it's the exact same step back that allowed... Well, that continues to allow Cinnamon, Pantheon, Deepin, and all the other GTK3 based desktop environments to be fairly popular in the face of GNOME. Because, granted, Ubuntu does come with GNOME by default, but it comes with three or four uh, extensions out of the box because GNOME by itself is unusable without extensions. That's a great desktop environment. And I, and I use KD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it just so happens that GNOME users want to move their dock around and resize it and have fun with it like other docks on Linux. <laughs> So um, what's really cool is the CEO of System76, Carl Rochelle, um, he actually tweeted this yesterday when asked about which version of GNOME will be used for Cosmic. And he said 3.38 for the 21.04 release, then GNOME 40 for 21.10. And the Cosmic, he said the Cosmic UX is the same for both underlying GNOME versions. So that was good to know. Uh, Gnome 40 is coming with Cosmic. <laughs> it's always very interesting. Um, <laughs> System76 is doing some very interesting things along with their hardware and with their software. Uh, it, you know, I like seeing stuff like this, especially since Canonical's kind of dialed back some of their Moonshot stuff and just like some of their exploratory and software applications <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, like Mirror and all the other fun things. And I don't say good on them. Also, like Le Gasp. They're listening to their users. That's System yeah. 76. They're like, uh, <laughs> let's ask the people who use the software, what do they think about it? Oh, you really mm -hmm. like this? You got no beat right there out of the gate. I, that's yeah. just reality. And as uh, long as I can still open a terminal, fine, <laughs> whatever. <happy. laughs> because I think both of you are just bizarre. I'm like, but things and drag them around. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. I never see my desktop. It, uh, mm -mm. <laughs> Well, you know what's really nice is I see the is, uh, windows around, yeah. uh, or the borders around the windows, so <laughs> that counts. That's a window manager, baby. That's yeah. my decorations. Yeah. Yeah, to me, System76 <laughs> has always had the best implementation of GNOME, and even, you know, they even have a tiling window manager version of it, so that you can, you know, it's, it's built in, which is really awesome. So for is. Ven, who wants to use terminal and keyboard commands, you can under Pop! OS with I didn't GNOME. say anything about keyboard commands. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually one of the things that they bring up in the article is they have two approaches you can either go with the more traditional mouse driven uh desktop or but you can go full on uh, keyboard they say, king. Pedro, they say it's <laughs> keyboard driven and mouse driven I'm like so you didn't break basic functionality yes <laughs> I mean, unlike the yeah. gnome project I don't know. I don't use GNOME. I use XFC because it's superior to everything. I'm not biased either. It just is. <laughs> uh, debatable at best, but okay. All right. So we've been following this and uh, it's kind of shown up. The Apple M1 hardware support has been merged into Linux 5.13. It's exciting, but don't rush out for an Apple M1. I don't know who is. I really want one to play with. This is... Ashi? Ashashi? How do we Asahi. Want Asahi. Asahi. <laughs> there we go. Basically, what it does right now, Hector Martin, we know him. We love him because he walked into the OBS project and adulted all over them, and it was glorious to read. Um, right now, basically, it boots. That's what you can expect from this. And if you want to play the home game, currently, right now, it's available in uh, Linux Next Gen. So if you want to go build that and play around, help contribute. I'm happy to see this. Uh, do you th I'm kind of willing to bet by the end of the year we'll just have it ready out of the box. You know, Hector's been mm -hmm. working on the long game with this. He's like, I'm going to do it right. <laughs> you know, my goal here is not just to instantly get up a desktop. I'm like, hey, we I want to build something that's maintainable. We're going to get it into the kernel, and it's going to be Doing usable. Doing properly, right. yeah. <laughs> and it's going to take a while. It's not going to get some great headlines, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, look, uh, Ubuntu running on a Mac. Like, and what of that project? So this yeah. is really good to see. It's nice to see, you know, that the framework has been set. And yeah, now they're going to be heavily working on uh, GPU support. So that's... That's the next big step. Yeah, really. they got to work on <laughs> GPU support. And another thing is um, the audio. But uh, 
definitely follow mm-hmm. Hector on Twitter because he's pretty good. He does uh, on his YouTube channel. He does live development streams, which is also good to see. Happy yeah. to see. That. And supposedly it will be with Colonel 513, which, uh, well, if, <laughs> if it hadn't been for the delays on 512, uh, that development on that could be uh, very well underway, but uh, not quite yet. I wouldn't know, Pedro. I use black magic hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> five eleven or five ten. <laughs> five 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 ten more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. So, Tank Republic is. Uh, yeah. Well, they're talking about MX Linux, but you, you go ahead and start off with this one. <laughs> okay. Well, this comes from one of my favorite uh, writers. Um, from Jack Wallen, and he examines why MX Linux is the most downloaded Linux distribution on DistroWatch. <laughs> and Pedro will have, will have something I, to say I about that later. I question the downloaded claim, but yes. <laughs> yes. So what's awesome is he describes MX Linux as having a clean desktop with the perfect balance of simplicity and ease of use for the new user, combined with a very configurable desktop for us veterans. And that desktop is XFCE which is one of the most stable Look, and user-friendly Look. and configurable <laughs> oh, oh, desktops I, that we here at this. LWW I love and use. I'm going to say this. <laughs> this is XFCE, <laughs> and my only thought is that poor XFCE. What have you oh. done to my boy? Oh, I like <laughs> look, putting. Ben, the... Look at what how good XFC could look. <laughs> yeah, I like the panel on the side too. I use that's, XFC. That's great. I, I have to use XFC <laughs> to get work done. So yeah, <laughs> Aww. but that's pretty for the new users, and that's the point of MX Linux is they want to cater to the yeah, new it says user. It right on the back that's of the box. Point for new. Yeah. Money. yeah. <laughs> Well, you can change it, Ben. You can change it. I don't have to change it. I'm not running MX Linux. Oh, Well, MX Linux is actually one of my favorite distros to install on my older 32-bit machines. And because uh, it's, it's it's really fast and, and nimble. And it is Debian-based. In fact, it's based on Antix Linux or Antix Linux, which is one of my favorite distros for old computers. Wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, NTX. Uh, that was, I remember using that distro a lot back when netbooks were, you know, popular in 2009, mm-hmm. 10-ish. Yeah. Uh, but the, yeah, my first point of contention, as I as I already mentioned, is it, it's not the most downloaded Linux desktop distribution. <laughs> it's just not. Ubuntu incorrect, is the most downloaded. Incorrect, Pedro. At the top of this article, MX Linux is the most downloaded Linux desktop distribution, and he knows Aww. why. Yes. So he's wrong on both counts. Oh. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the thing is, it's. Uh, Here you go, you're using those facts. <laughs> yeah, because this watch doesn't track downloads, it tracks hits when people go and look at the page and then click through to the website that that's a hit and mx linux has been very popular lately and the popularity tends to be kind of viral and distros tend to shoot all the way up to the top of the um to the top of the list as long as people keep putting out articles like the next thing you're going to try to tell me (laughs) is that distro watch only tracks those hits at distrowatch.com some nonsense like that right yeah, I, nobody's yeah, going to believe that. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> that, that's pretty much uh, how it goes. And, and saying that MX Linux is the most downloaded Linux desktop distribution is like saying that I'm the best RoboCraft player because I get a bunch of best player and best looking uh, bot votes at the end of the match. That's just not the case. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> it's it, no. It, you like MX Linux? That's great. Don't lie to people. I don't think it was intentional. God. I was just ill informed. Yeah. Like, I'm going to write an exciting. article about Linux. No, I, no, no. I don't Click. think it, yeah. <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> Clickbait. Or, like, I don't really know what a Linux is, but hey, look, this has got numbers on this draw. Which is nothing it's against. Jack Wallet, you should know what Linux is. has been writing about it for a while. <laughs> you would think that, Pedro. <laughs> <sighs> um,. No, that's pretty decent. And nothing against District Watch. It's a great place to, I mean, still, mm-hmm. if, if you like that retro 
I'm so into Zion, man. <laughs> yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. It's one we can rely on and know and trust for years and years. <laughs> It'll be there. <laughs> now, the latest Arch ISO has a fresh new gilded installer. That's right. You want to use Arch and uh, you don't want to do all that tippy tapping to get it up and running. That's right. You, you're you like, I run Arch, you run Manjaro. Shut up, Arch. That's what I don't people on mine. <laughs> I run like 11 Arches. So, yeah. L- look at this brazen new flashy installer, Pedro. What do you think about that? Like a guided... Nice. That's uh, like our Theron said earlier in the week in our Discord. Yeah, it's easy mode arch if you don't want to download Manjaro, which, I mean, if you're going to go through that, yeah, just get Manjaro. It, it, you'll end up with the exact same system by the end of it, most likely. And with Manjaro, at least you know that you have a sane working base to start breaking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I don't get it. I thought that people who used Arch they wanted to use Arch so that they could uh follow the guide on the Arch wiki which is very nice uh and then uh claim that they were somehow superior to everyone else and uh to remind everyone on the internet that they used why Arch. why are you so against kids <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm just Pedro, against the loud ones. You got to you, you got to roll it back, and you got to remember being young and like Arch is great. It first it emphasizes reading comprehension and following yes. instructions because if you don't yes. pull that off, uh, you're going to have a bad time. B it lets you know immediately. You're like, hey man, I run Arch. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to dial back some of the technical stuff for you. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> So you can help them out. And I think it's mm-hmm. perfectly serviceable distribution for new users. Oh, yeah. And it'll yeah. teach you a lot about exactly. how to recover from a broken new distro. Page, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Because it will break. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta learn to maintain that rolling release. So this yep. is actually really cool because it's a step above from the classic Slackware and Debian command line installers. So that's nice. It's nice to have, uh, have some prompts. And... Uh, uh, to make it easier to install. But actually, my favorite Arch-based distro is Endeavor OS, which uses the easy-to-use and beautiful ah. Calamari's installer GUI, which is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> we can't call it Anargos anymore. It's Endeavor yeah, now. <laughs> uh, yes, it's Endeavor. We love Endeavor. <laughs> I, I, I use it heavily on one of my laptops, and I love it. <laughs> Radios. <laughs> <laughs> yes now now comes the big one and hang on, well it's hang on. big I, I, I gotta ask you though have, have you, ever, you ever looked at a radio and went like oh you just radio nah <laughs> yeah no that's the, that's the thing because every single smartphone people have nowadays has a crusty old 3G, well, it's 5G nowadays, uh, or maybe just LTE modem that's running a very proprietary uh, bit of firmware that technically the operating system that's running on your phone can only sort of kind of talk to. Uh, it And it's, yeah, people, as people have uh, found, well, it's, it's, it's come into prominence recently that uh, SMS is not that secure. Go figure. Mm-hmm. And, um, Maybe driven by that, a couple of uh, very well-intentioned people managed to uh, create a completely open-source uh, firmware for the PinePhone modem. And this is huge, because you might be thinking, okay, so it's just for the PinePhone modem, it's a niche product at most. Yes, but if they can get full functionality, like full 3G, 4G, 5G, what have you, uh, and make calls out of it, which they have, They've made calls and the voice implementation is all uh, open source as well. They uh, There's a couple of things that still aren't working terribly well. One of them is that the uh, modem, when it goes to sleep, it takes a while on the open source firmware to come back. And the ADSP frequency divider still requires proprietary firmware. So... Those are two of the uh, bigger sticking points, but if this works and everything is working on a completely open base, that could make SMS 
much more secure in the future as people start to figure out ways of well creating a better bit of firmware than the antiquated one that's, well, that's running on your brand on new phone with, you know people <laughs> who are the type of people who typically are going to buy something like a pine phone not a fan of um binary blobs and <laughs> even with this firmware there's currently still going to be some closed source code running on the modem for the adsp you know the radio controls and stuff like that they're working on it but you know this is good to see. This is interesting. You know, I think people are just sitting back, you know, we had issues like Broadcom <laughs> and then getting our first engineered and all that. But yay. I don't know. Yeah, no. That, I say yay because I, I like to. seeing stuff like this. <laughs> and I was talking earlier this week and I'm like, there, there's different levels to ingenuity and boredom because there was, <laughs> I, I ran across a GitHub repo and the guy was like, I got bored. So I'm re- reverse engineering Epson printer firmware. I'm like, man. All right, right on. I, <laughs> so being able to like, huh. doing Lord Torvalds's work there. <laughs> Aw, well, I think this is actually really wonderful. And uh, like Jordan or Frojo in chat has said, uh, the, the Federal Communication Commission here in the U.S. is not going to like this. They need that those proprietary blobs. But I know you, the European Union is more. It, amenable to this so <laughs> yeah the european union is, yeah. is a, a big because they big have proponent of accountability yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and fair use and and yeah <laughs> so it's oh, really man. cool well, let's talk about that hot fresh new app that all the kids are playing with <laughs> yeah so this is you know in the linux world this is one of our favorite uh screensaver apps x screensaver well it's um, the screensaver yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, 6.00 has just been released, and it actually has lots of major updates. Um, there's actually been a, a major refactoring of the X Screensaver daemon, which is the component of the Screensaver X Screensaver suite that provides screen locking on X11 systems. And so what they did is for improved security, the daemon has been divided into three programs, X Screensaver, X Screensaver, TAC, G. GFX and X screensaver tack off. So he's he separated those. The developer separated those for for better security, and it works faster too. And it it all it has. Gosh, there's so many new features. It has uh, now the unlock dialog has a user selected color schemes, so you can make it look a little prettier. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I know what Pedro is going to say about that. <laughs> and and uh, what's really cool is it also uses uh, X Free Type for fonts now, um, much nicer. And it will use EGL instead of GLX when available. So very important. And that's just a small list of the updates. You can go to the the website and take a look for yourself. There's lots there. <laughs> yeah that the thing about x screen saver is yeah. and it's not just me because uh nori caught a glimpse of uh the screen on the netbook <laughs> while i was installing uh i was just i had finished installing fedora with xfc and i let it idle for just long enough that x screen saver came up and then i wiggled the mouse just as nori was walking past and she looked at the screen it's like oh god that looks like it's from the 90s Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, basically, the what is now called X Screen Saver Auth, that little window that allowed you to authenticate, you know, the one that a couple of versions ago, you could just hit enter on repeatedly and it would crash and let you into the desktop. Yes. That one. <laughs> it's, uh, it, yeah, that, that looked terrible. But, it, but hey, it's uh, actually being worked on and it's a separate thing now so if you think you can help and make that look a little bit more integrated with the screensaver i i strongly recommend that you do because it 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 needs work and um i guess i don't know what's your favorite screensaver mine was always a gl matrix uh mine's power off after 15 minutes (laughs) screen blank (laughs) screen blank after five power off after 15 (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> My entirety, uh, we just don't use screensavers this day because, I, you know, I, I don't like burning electricity. I'm like, suck it, environment. I'm just going to use power for no reason. We don't have uh, CRTs. <laughs> there is that as well. The only time I see a screensaver, because it's on by default in Debian, it is. Yeah. Is on <laughs> these two boxes after a fresh re image. I know Pedro's seen this in production before. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> and like one of the yes, yeah, because one of these monitors will time out. It'll get like crazy psychotic. It'll go full nineties. Like ah, okay, let's disable that. It's good that it's getting updated. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. I wonder what the uh, screensaver situation is on Wayland. You know, I see. Uh, that, yeah, no. Uh, um, this writer brought that up. I don't know. I'm yeah, it's with, probably uh, just screen blanking. Uh, I have no yeah. idea. But Unless if there's a gnome I don't either. One, I don't either. Like gnome screensaver. Because hmm. when I've played I with Wayland, know. I've just had it go to blank screen. So I haven't had it actually That's what it defaults to. So if you're yeah. sitting at home and you're like, hey, I know exactly how this works or this is what I use. Send us a message. Head over to linesgamecast.com and smash that contact button. Bam. But we need to talk about local party. Cleverly made. <laughs> it's a website where you can create rooms and chat while watching local video files synchronized with your friends. And you're like, but then I can already do that if I give Amazon, what is it now? I think $120 last time mine renewed for Prime and a select bit of videos. And man, it gets really squirrely when we're in different countries trying to find the same <laughs> ones for an Amazon watch party. This is more, you know, hey. Roll your own. It's got some limitations. Really easy to install, Pedro, right? Just pip install one. <laughs> no pips. No pippies. <laughs> no pips. No, uh, actually, I must have been looking at a different uh, repo while writing the show notes because it's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to NPM just to find out if this is Windows only. And then just before the show, I went looking through the show notes again and I was looking at this. It's like, there's no NPM here. What was I on about? Mm. <laughs> this is the question so, I asked yeah. Pedro in the show notes because I cloned the Git and I'm like, oh, that's how this works. You just pull it up and you head over there and you create a room. Yeah, it's just a website. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you host your own instance and, you know, you can chat with your friends while watching video in sync. Now, mm -hmm. here's the limitations of it. Here's the limitations of it. And the, I mean, here's like the big one that is going to chase off 98% of you. Both of you have to have the same video file to watch. This isn't going to stream what you're watching to your friends so you can watch it in sync. So, I mean, as long as you get, you know, both of you have the same video file, you know, you've downloaded something from Netflix. Oh, it was the OBS one. Yeah. I remember now. <laughs> okay. Now that you started talking, uh, yeah, no, it was the OBS one that you could, yeah. That that was the uh, GitHub repo that I okay. was talking about the NPM stuff. All right. <laughs> okay. That's great. I like the color blue. Um. <laughs> yeah. Look, it just so clicked. Okay. <laughs> I have to say it out loud. <laughs> it's, it's better now than like two thirty in the morning. Get like, -ding. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. uh, really? <laughs> oh, I guess you're up for work. All right. Time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually really cool, though, because setting up video viewing parties has been, of course, all the rage since the pandemic, since we can't do it in IRL. So it's it's I've actually really noticed a lot of people on Twitter using local party, and I've been inv invited to several Star Trek viewing parties with this app. So it seems to be very popular. And that's cool. You can stick a fork it at yet. it, clone it, set it up. <laughs> this is uh, very brand new. It's only been out for about a month. So yeah, yeah, get out there, go play with it. All the links to everything will be in our show notes. And I would like a streaming solution. I would, I, I would be happy with something like with Netflix or uh, Amazon, or if it was just something. I understand why you don't really want to put one out there for um. Like um, just streaming yourself to other people because that's going to get a problem. Or you can just do what everyone's been doing since forever is just doing it mm. in Discord because Discord's like, what? Uh, we don't care. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they only care if it gets, it's the Valve approach of doing things. They only care if it gets enough publicity, then they have to do something about it. It's like, All right, fine. Tune <laughs> in Saturday. We have a perfect example of that. But, Pedro, 
If you can explain what Vulcan video is, you've done a one good. <laughs> Vulcan video is the new uh, hardware accelerated implementation. Well, based on Vulcan, uh, introduced by the Kronos Group, it is a set of extensions which allow you to lower your CPU uh, utilization and use even more of your GPU in the process. And it comes with um, the two cores, the decode queue and the encode queue, and all of the extensions necessary to support uh, H.264 and H.265 encoding and decoding, as well as uh, AV1, uh, though that will come in the future. And there's only video decoding for VP9. It's like, well, why you know encode? But hey, uh, <laughs> the... Um, the the post is long, but they do go into very um I mean you can look at that flowchart. Uh it is it goes into detail as to what the extensions do and how this could basically streamline the whole uh encoding decoding process that you're currently doing on your uh GPU using OpenGL, GLX more than likely if you're on Linux, and doing that with Vulkan. And I, for one, have been just screaming at the top of my lungs, yes, I want something like GLX, but for Vulcan, please. Please? It's 2021 <laughs> now. Can we? <laughs> it's please? coming, Pedro. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it will be so nice to have an open standard for bare metal video acceleration, one that isn't proprietary and isn't locked down to specific hardware. So this yeah. this is really, really, really exciting. And like Pedro was saying, you know, H.265 uh, and code extension is currently in development and VP9 decode and AVI decode and, and encode extensions are, are going to follow in future releases. So that is coming. And yes, we need VP9 encode as well. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a strange occlusion. Maybe it's far enough yeah. in the future that they figured, eh, let's not mention We're not dealing with it now. Yeah, they're going to probably do, yeah, AVI, <laughs> AV1 first. <laughs> it's so. interesting because when you start looking at like AV, um, AV1 encoding and stuff like that, um, there's really nothing that can do it efficiently that's not dedicated ASICs. So... <laughs> Maybe, I mean, you're going to need dedicated silicon to be able to do that anything like remotely near real, real time. This isn't going to fix that. But having like a unified, you know, the whole spirit behind Vulcan is everyone target this one thing and let, let, let's quit doing and open it GL, gets spin as this low version level or, yeah. as you can. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, I, I've always liked to call it like Glide 4. It's like glitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah no vulcan as it currently stands it has the possibility of making sli uh configurations for gpus viable it has the possibility of making video decoding universal regardless of whatever gpu you happen to be running and i do mean mm -hmm. whatever gpu whatever. you happen to be running <laughs> it's <laughs> At this point, it is the thing that people should be developing for, nope. but everyone is too DX12. busy uh, sucking DX12, on the <laughs> glue DX12. stick that is Microsoft Direct X and uh, how Visual Studio Code basically writes it for them. So, yeah, no, keep munching that glue stick. Hey, man, <laughs> listen, I keep getting paid. <laughs> Yeah, you get paid regardless of whatever you're doing, be it Vulcan or DX12. So if you can get VS Code to write it for you, <laughs> might as well. So I think that's very neat. I'm I'm glad to see Vulcan branching out into different things, man. Maybe someday we'll have the argument it's like, whoa, dude, does your system run System V? <laughs> Vulcan's just gotten too big, man. It's in too many places. No. <laughs> Uh, that's what we used to call System D. <laughs> oh, man. So, beautiful people, uh, we're going to get into a slice of pie. Before that, we want to thank everybody who makes it possible. That's over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Stick around your names in the credit. You like what we do. You want to kick us back. That'd be awesome. We invite you to come hang out in our Discord. And the same thing goes if you sub to us on Twitch. You get that nice little invite. You get some early access stuff. I got one thing coming out this week. It's already out, actually. I put it for patrons. If you are looking for a um, really, really low cost, like laughably high quality um, audio interface, like single channel for podcasting or live streaming, 
I got one and it's double interesting because it only works on Linux. Doesn't work on Mac. Doesn't work on Windows 10. So mm-hmm. yeah, keep, keep a lookout for that. And I got another one coming out later this week. That's going to be interesting. You get um, our live streams. If you don't catch them on Twitch, we get those up and all that announcement stuff in discords where we're hanging out the other six days a week. And we thank you for letting us do this. It's kind of neat. So let's get into that. That That's a Venn Ooh, level. It looks, yeah, um, that looks like that's crust. A, a shoop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 that's very shoop. <laughs> I don't know, Pedro. Can you, can you tell by like, just, I, I want to know what was used, like a picture of a raspberry Pi for the, um, the yeah. It, was it the subtraction tool that they use to, uh, remove the <laughs> the thing and then add the texture on just the top layer because that's it what it look, looks like it does look what very else? fleshy like our next story oh so okay this is actually for real and is very creepy that and honestly amazing. i i thought this was an april fool's joke a little bit i thought it was a joke blog but no this is actually legitimate and um it has a practical application for human interaction this is actually icam and anthropomorphic webcam shaped like a human eye that can see blink look around and observe you <laughs> and it looks kind of horrifying <laughs> but that's the whole point <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a design prototype exploring the potential futures of sensing devices and you know what we as humans would uh, how we would like to interact with our technology <laughs> And it's really cool because the control of the eye movements is made with an Arduino Nano, and it is connected to a computer via Raspberry Pi Zero. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he's petting the eye cam, okay. (laughs) It's like a pet. And it uses real hair for the eyebrows. (laughs) so, but it's very, yeah, very they effective. They could sell a lot the of motors, these if they made it cute. <laughs> yes. The motors are, are incredible. I mean, it really does look like a human eye <laughs> and blinking and moving around and, and watching you. <laughs> I think it might be a, a security nightmare as well as a visual nightmare, but it's it's for <laughs> research. <laughs> and, you know, it actually, what's really cool is that they're they're posing the question, what's too creepy to interact with as humans you know uh, you uh, know this might kudos be kudos in that case <laughs> yeah. because yeah. they nailed it. they're right at the bottom of the uh, the uncanny valley there that that's... yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> so i was really impressed with this project because look how unique and different this is and and you know this is it's very android looking so <laughs> they they've nailed that <laughs> <laughs> So it could yeah, be, you know, no. it could be data in the future, you know, <laughs> and part of data. <laughs> See, I love Android. it, but I knew, yeah, I, I know that if I got one of them, uh, the moment I turned my back, Nori would grab it and toss it out the window because yeah. <laughs> it's just too creepy. All <laughs> things like, all right, so portable power. Can I get that in the mailbox or not? <laughs> yeah it looks like it'll fit in a mailbox <laughs> yeah no it's whether or not the uh, mail person is doing the x-ray scan of what's going through <laughs> oh no that, i have a mailbox Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well my mail driver comes by each day opens it and put so I, oh actually put one in there <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Someone with it. Yeah, there if you I go. Can make it, you know, this a little bit. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just say hello. <laughs> but but if Ven gets it, it might start crying. Maybe it'll have human tears. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to say they, you know, they could sell so many of them uh, if they made them cute, like you know, make like a cute little cyclops that's like sprawled out on top of your monitor. I, that I, would sell so much. I can turn it into like a chia pet, man. You know, just yeah. like a fuzz ball with an eye, and it'd be great. Listen, if you if you have been having a problem with your children sleeping, this would probably sort that for them. You know, keep them up nights on end. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Our chat is blowing up. Steve husband says, wish it into the cornfield quick. And Artharon says, lick it. And Justin says, burn it with fire. You can practice like we'll call it I you'll be able to practice like putting makeup on it and you know doing the lashes. And mm-hmm. It'll be brilliant. hundred <laughs> percent. All right. We gotta get out of here. We are running out of time. Pedro, how can uh everyone get a hold to us if they want to uh Oh, look, here's the Pedro you thing. You can... Watch. See, um, Pedro you played can, a absolutely. thing. Look at that. Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, and then <laughs> the developer... Week, uh, <laughs> Devolution X. The developer showed up, and they're like, hey, let me address every single point that you made in your hour-long video. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked a lot of questions because I specifically said, look... I haven't played a lot of Diablo 1, so I don't know which is which. And yeah, to his credit, he went in and was like, yo, so this is uh, Devolution X. This was not in the original Diablo. This is something that we did. And uh, yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. Okay. All right. There was just one question left unanswered, so we'll see. But hey, if you'd like to grab a hold of us, uh, you can uh, run after us uh, on the street and lasso us and tie us to a pole so we can't run away. Or you can go to LexGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, and fill out the form. LWDW is the show where you can leave us uh, some feedback. Otherwise, we may misinterpret it as a um, certain type of hate mail. We'll, we'll read it. Aw. On LWW, it's love mail. <laughs> you can even be constructive on LWDW. I wouldn't try that on Saturday, though. <laughs> you can. Stay tuned. Pedro will try to be reconstructive. Aww. It'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to get out of here. But before we do that, we need to roll some credits. Yeah. Look at that button mm, mashing. Yay. <laughs> and yes, Steve Husband said the last story was Muscari. <laughs> <laughs> so Muscari. Steve, that's yeah. low caliber even for one of your dad jokes. <laughs> bring your A game next week. <laughs> bye bye, Steve Husband. Oh, he's got to go back to work. <laughs> Look at all yes, our wonderful patrons. All. <laughs> all of you watching us live and all of you fine fine sea monsters and death notes and advisors and um, <laughs> little Nikki fans and the charitlings you're all amazing crazy but amazing yeah we love you <laughs> and yes our sh- Arthur said I should have seen that coming <laughs> perfect <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.